today we're going to be discussing the use of internalized homophobia in queer media with the characters Mike Wheeler from Stranger Things and Lucas from Eyewitness. So what is internalized homophobia? Basically, it occurs when a person is subjected to society's negative perceptions, intolerance, and stigma towards people with same-sex attraction. They then turn those ideas inwards, believing that they are true, and experience self-hatred as a result of being a socially stigmatized person. Internalized homophobia can also be defined as a tendency of some queer people to regularly invalidate, marginalize, and or oppress their own or other LGBT plus members. People with internalized homophobia are consciously or unconsciously socialized into believing that members of the LGBT plus community are abnormal, shameful, undesirable, and unacceptable, and should be regarded with disdain and contempt. It's important to note that this is often the result of a gay person or a queer person in an environment that is teaching this. I am someone who dealt with this growing up. I still have issues with it and occasionally flares up. But I can personally relate to this, and this is why I see this in these characters. My fault you don't like girls. I'm not gay like you. Projection of internalized homophobia is one of the key symptoms. Usually it is done towards the person that the one suffering with internalized homophobia likes. Oftentimes, that person becomes a target to a person with internalized homophobia. This can be quite literally violent or it can just be remarks because oftentimes a person with internalized homophobia will blame the person they like for making them the way they are. Obviously, it's their fault, not their own. They think I'm gay too? No, no, now they think that you're a homophobic bully, which you are. Hey, how you doing? And again, this internal belief that all that negative society perceptions makes it difficult for a person with internalized homophobia to come out. You think this is a joke? What? Are you serious? What? What? This is a gay club? Where did you think we were going? A regular club? Yeah. Okay, well, we're here now, so let's get a drink. I'm not staying here. to run away from these feelings that are causing you so much shame and anguish at the end of the day it's the journey towards self-acceptance that helps you recover from internalized homophobia speaking from experience the moment you start to accept who you really are is the moment your whole life will turn around on you it'll become a more positive and fulfilling environment if you can accept the thing that is causing you so much pain nobody cares who you are here you could be rick anderton Nobody cares, don't you get that? Come on. I thought, I thought this would help. Sometimes I think it's just scary to open up like that, to say how you really feel. Because what if, what if they don't like the truth? Now let's talk about the beard. So if you don't know what beard means, here's a little description of it. Relationships happen knowingly or unknowingly. Oftentimes it's when an LGBT plus person is trying to figure out their sexual orientation and they think they're supposed to go with the opposite sex because that's what's heteronormative. But eventually they'll figure out that, oh, this is really just a shield to hide who I really am. Mike has L and Lucas has Rose. Hey, you. You coming to my party on Saturday? Yeah, hey, Summer. Everyone's gonna be there. Stop stalking me. Well, what about us? What? That's because she's my girlfriend, Will. And us? We're friends. We're friends. Well, we used to be best friends. And no matter how hard they try in their beard relationships, they are miserable. You can see it here on Mike's face here, and you can see it on Lucas here. Doesn't matter. You don't know how to shoot it right. Baby, what's wrong? But around other people, oh boy, do they project that everything is going just peachy. To be about me and you. There, you're not lying. <laughs> oh, no. No, that's not, that's, that's not true. You don't, you don't love me anymore. You never say it. I say it. Why would I lie? Because that's all you do. I lie to everyone else, not to you. I swear I broke up with Rose, okay? What'd she say? She said that she never liked me anyway.
Did she talk to you at all? Not much. It's interesting because Mike actually has a very mild case of internalized homophobia. If we're even just comparing him to Lucas, he's very mild. Hey, you your new friend. Get out of here. What if somebody survived? I can't believe what's happening. You're into me. That's what's happening. Just deal with it. No, no, no. No one knows. And... So what if they do? Who cares? I care. You don't get it. I don't... I don't want to be that guy. And my dad, he doesn't want me to be that guy. And, and Rose... No one wants me to be that guy. Well, what if you are? Lucas as an example of the journey of overcoming internalized homophobia, this means he's likely going to have some sort of confrontation with his father figure. Are we broken up with their beard girlfriend? Make it up to the love interest for being shitty to them. Finally, pursue the happiness that they deserve by coming out. A reminder that the season three rain fight is also a parallel to this show, Eyewitness. Tommy, because of us, because we didn't say him. Nothing's gonna happen. He's, destroying everything He's probably off just hooking up with Tracy somewhere. You said girl. you weren't gonna stupid. tell. I'm it's not gay no like you. Girls. No one even knows we talk, got it? No, you no, 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 we should have told Helen. Why when this happened? trying to be a jerk. Okay. That's how internalized homophobia is being used within these two shows. Plus, it gave us some insight on how Mike's journey could be going. I think that's really exciting. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Please, don't, don't, don't tell. <laughs>